this video, we are going to analyze one practical important property of LQ Optimal State Feedback Regulators. In fact, since the analysis will deal with stability, the conclusions will hold good for trackers as well. So, we consider a feedback interconnection of a system or plant represented by the G block and a state feedback controller represented by the K block. Of course, it's understood that at the output of G we have all the state variables. Now, in order to analyze the stability of the closed loop, the classical procedure is to analyze properties of the open loop. Hence, we have to open our closed loop. I show in the diagram where to cut the closed loop open. The transfer function G is in general a matrix of transfer functions. Note that the output matrix C is seemingly missing in the formula, but it's just that we set it equal to the identity matrix. All state variables are present among the outputs of the system. The open loop transfer function L is then given as a product of the matrix of state feedback gains K and the matrix G of transfer functions. Note the order here. In the scalar case it doesn't matter, but here we must be careful and consistent with where we cut the feedback loop open. Note that the inputs to the open loop transfer function enter G first and only then they go to K. A useful mnemotechnic is that we read the expressions for series interconnections of matrix transfer functions from the right to the left. Assume temporarily that the system has just a single input. The matrix B is then a column vector and the matrix K of state feedback gains is a row vector. And the open loop transfer function is a scalar transfer function. The only motivation is to help you develop insight first. In uh, the analysis, we will investigate how the term 1 plus L, often called return difference in control theory, behaves on the imaginary axis. Why? You will see the details shortly, but let me remind you that this term appears in the denominators of closed loop transfer functions. In particular, we are interested in, interested in the magnitude of this term on the imaginary axis. And as I said, on the imaginary axis. Therefore, let's substitute j, the imaginary unit, times omega, the frequency, for s. Clearly, the absolute value of 1 plus l is the same as the absolute value of minus 1 minus l, which can be interpreted as the distance of l, for a given omega, from the point minus 1 in the complex plane. Do you remember from your undergraduate days? We start invoking our old good friend Nyquist criterion for closed loop stability. Now, very often we are asked to evaluate, or, or if we are asked to evaluate an absolute value of a complex number, it appears, maybe surprisingly, that it's a bit easier to evaluate its square. And recall that the square of an absolute value is obtained by multiplying the number with its complex conjugate. All right, conjugates. One technical definition will be useful here. We define a conjugate system, or actually its conjugate transfer function, as the original transfer function where, instead of s, we substitute minus s. And we label such conjugation of a transfer function using the symbol of star. Actually, some authors also use the symbol of tilde to denote the same thing. The usefulness of this new concept is that if we evaluate L star on the imaginary axis, we immediately obtain the complex conjugate of the original transfer function, evaluated at the same point on the imaginary axis, at the same frequency, if you like. Verify by yourself. This is a very useful result in control theory, but also elsewhere in signal processing and filter design, for example. The extension of the concept of conjugation to MIMO systems, that is, to matrices of transfer functions, is that the original matrix is also transposed. And the relationship between L star and the original matrix function L on the imaginary axis modifies accordingly. Not only complex conjugation, but also transposition. Maybe you have just realized that this is actually the default interpretation of the prime sign in MATLAB. Complex conjugation and transposition. Now comes the time for the great result. It's called Kalman's identity for return differences for the LQR problem. I will only show the result for the restricted and yet relevant case where the R matrix is diagonal, parameterized just by a single parameter rho. What we are after 
is the product of i plus l star times i plus l, where i is the identity matrix, matrix of course. You are now perfectly aware of what is the reason for studying this, aren't you? We simply want to know how big i plus l is on the imaginary axis. Kalman identity is then right over here. I do not feel like showing you the proof. It's rather technical and you will find it elsewhere if you are interested. What I only want to show is that the second term in the sum is, again, square of some complex number or matrix in the general MIMO case. It's straightforward to conclude that the whole sum is greater than or equal to the identity matrix, where the inequality should be interpreted in the matrix sense and not the element-wise sense. Say, if we write a greater than or equal b, it means that a minus b is positive sem semi-definite. In the scalar case, it's perfectly clear and intuitive, I guess. The absolute value of uh, 1 plus kg evaluated on the imaginary axis is always greater than or equal to 1. This is an impressive result with profound impact. It allows us to make some striking conclusions about closed-loop stability margins. The fact that 1 plus L can never be smaller in magnitude than 1 means that there is a forbidden region in the complex plane that can never be entered by the, Ny by the Nyquist curve. This curve, that is, open loop transfer function evaluated on the imaginary axis can then look like this or like this but also like this we can immediate, immediately conclude that the gain margin is infinity we can multiply the open loop transfer function however much we like and we will never lose closed loop stability when it comes to decreasing the open loop gain the margin is one half we can reduce the open loop gain down to one half without the risk of losing stability. The face margins are minus and plus 60 degrees. You may need a minute or two of contemplation and some high school trigonometry to show it. Good. That's it. You may want to run the following code a few times in MATLAB. It generates some random system, designs an LQ optimal state feedback regulator and plots the body plots, that is, the open loop uh, magnitude and phase plots while also computing the gain and phase margins. Run it how many times you want and you will always receive not only a stabilizing regulator but also very nice stability margins. It's like magic, isn't it? Recall that when using some other feedback controller configurations and related design procedures, say for example when tuning a PID controller, you can easily even destabilize the system for some setting of the controller parameters. Here, whatever weighting matrices you choose, the closed-loop system will be stable and even with decent stability margins. This is really great, but let me state right now that these plausible properties are immediately lost, if not all the state variables are directly measured and must be estimated. More on this in one of the next videos.